What is going on YouTube? It's Tyler from Mission VR where it's my mission to bring you guys good quality VR content. So in today's video, we are gonna be going into an in-depth review of the Pico 4 headset. I finally had some opportunities to really dive deep into this headset. I have used it now for standalone games. I have used it for other PC VR games other than the main games that I play. You know, because that was the first thing I did was test it on the main games I played. And then I started to, to go out and experience some other VR titles and just really see what this thing can do um, on all fronts, as well as putting some hours into the headset to really understand, you know, what its play sessions are, the battery life, all that stuff. You know, what, what can I do and what can I do with this headset? So we're also going to go over some tips and tricks on how to enhance your experience with Pico 4, as well as um, really what I how I feel about this headset after putting some significant time into it. So... Uh, all that in today's video. Make sure you guys do drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, leave in a comment section what you guys think of the Pico 4. Um, how's your experience been? If you've been using it for a while now, are you pleasantly surprised? Are you happy with it? Is it something you're going to be, you know, looking at the next version of this when Pico brings out, obviously, the, the Pico 5, whatever that may be? I'm sure that's in the works as, you know, the MetaQuest 3 is coming right around the corner. So they're going to want to stay um, as competitive as they can with that. So I would imagine we'll be getting an upgraded version of this probably within the year. Uh, not maybe this year, but within a year from now, from the date of this video going out. So, um, but either way, yeah, that is going to be all in today's video. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And without further ado, let's get into it. So diving right on into this full review here of the Pico 4. Now, I've had the opportunity now through doing all this and testing all this to really extensively see what this headset can do, um, playing in both standalone and PC VR, and kind of what my experience has been. But first and foremost, you know, when we're talking about a full in-depth review, you know, I think that it's important to understand the initial presentation that this headset provides. And the Pico 4 definitely delivers here. This is definitely a very big highlight for me. I thought the unboxing experience of my, you know, whenever I got my Pico was enjoyable. I thought the box was well done. Everything was put together neatly in the box. And of course, one of my favorite, it had that new VR headset smell, which you all, I'm sure, are familiar with at this point. And it's definitely a good feeling. A great presentation um, on, you know, really when I got my Pico. So for that, that's a nice little score right there for you guys. Um, you know, whenever you're going to get your Pico, I, I know it's minor, but you know, that stuff does matter to consumers and it definitely mattered to me whenever reviewing this headset. But moving on, I definitely want to talk about a pros and cons list with the Pico 4 and really help you guys understand, you know, where, you know, I kind of was at with this headset. So first and foremost, let's start with the pros because there's definitely a lot more of them than the cons. And that's definitely a good thing. Hint, hint, where we're going with this review. Um, first and foremost, the number one thing I want to talk about with the Pico 4 um, compared to competitors that will remain unnamed is the visuals. The absolute visual graphical um, upgrade that I think this headset has is definitely there. Um, the, the lenses make a huge difference. And I think that the games just look cleaner in this headset than they do on certain competitors. Is it staggering? Is it going to change your VR experience overall? Eh, I don't know about that, but I do think overall that the visuals are, are fantastic. Um, I really enjoyed them. And this is both for, like I said, standalone and PC VR. And really just um, just blew me away, especially, you know, some of the games and, and the PC VR side of things, you know, when you're connected up to a PC, you can really see those lenses doing their full work. And I will say I'm looking forward to in the future trying more headsets with the pancake style lenses and possibly even if Quest 3 goes that way, then that'll be a nice uh, a nice upgrade because this is headset really delivered on the visuals with these lenses. I was very, very impressed. Even the standalone games I thought looked really solid compared to, again, competitors. Um, you know, as much as standalone games can look as solid as they can, because, you know, when you're comparing it up against a PC, it never, it'll never be able to compete. But when you're comparing standalone to standalone, I thought the graphics on the Pico 4 did a really good job and really got to see some of the amazing uh, job that VR and, you know, the visuals as well as the immersion that VR can put you in. Another pro for me is actually one that you could technically look at as a con, but I didn't. I think this is a really big step. The games, the game library. The game library for Pico 4 isn't as big as obviously Meta's, but it does have some solid titles and it has a lot of the main VR games that you'd want to play anyways if you were getting a VR headset. So that's really great. And it gives you a lot of options. There's not like there's a short game library. You don't have as much, but there's a lot of good titles there and a lot of the best games that are being currently worked on that are not Meta exclusives 
are also coming to the Pico store because there's enough people playing the Pico headset. So it's not like you're going to buy this headset and then never have another game to play other than what's offered in the library. You certainly will have plenty of options as the fan base for this headset continues to grow. And Pico as a company continues to bring out more VR headsets um, that, you know, are going to continue to be upgraded. I do think that at this point, the Pico 4 has established itself pretty well in this space as a competitor in the standalone industry. And I don't think it's going away anytime soon because the product they delivered is pretty solid and it's still early and growing, of course. So that's always a positive thing whenever you see a growing company um, producing a really solid piece of hardware. Another pro for me I found was the tracking of this headset. Minor thing, but definitely, um, you know, I've played with some other VR headsets where the tracking kind of cuts in and out. And this is disorienting and it can certainly throw off your gaming experience. I felt like the inside out tracking of the Pico 4 really was solid. And there was never a point where I lost tracking or felt like, you know, this is cut rate tracking or, you know, oh, this isn't as good as the leading edge competitors. I felt like the tracking was really, really excellent and just overall just gave me exactly what I was looking for in VR, which is an overall positive experience with no, um, no hiccups or immersion breaking things. Another thing I really loved about this headset that I, I was just, I was actually more surprised by this and probably any other feature on this headset was the sound. The sound quality coming out of the speakers was fantastic. Um, you know, in, in playing standalone games, a lot of times I'd put like Apple headphones in into the um, head uh, the headset jack, just because I really like to play VR games with headphones on. I think it increases the immersion. Um, but occasionally, depending on my environment or where I'm at or you know whatnot, I'll play with just a native sound on the headset. And I have to say, during my um, during my testing of this headset, I was just playing some games and I was like, wow, is this really just the sound? Like, I feel like I'm, I'm immersed into the world. You know, of course, as long as my dogs aren't barking in the back or something like that, then everything was just great. And I just really felt immersed into the world. And, and then no point did I feel like the sound was one directional or anything that would, you know, just kind of not sound natural, honestly. And it sounded a lot better than some of the competitors headsets that I have played whenever native sound. And like I said, typically I wear headphones as it is, but I was certainly impressed with the sound design. Another pro for me on this headset is just the overall um, software of the headset. I, I actually was really impressed with this. It connected really, really well to my PC using the streaming assistant. I had no issues. It was almost seamless. Um, which is great because that's, you know, I've again, some of the other VR headsets I've tried, you know, haven't necessarily had the same results, you know, whenever connecting up or, you know, doing it or having multiple software bugs or whatnot. But the Pico experience was pretty smooth when connecting to a PC. It was also just a, a lot of good options. You got some hand tracking. One of the small little features that I talked about in my tips and tricks video was just the pass through of this headset and it really made this is so easy. And there's possibly a feature on my quest that I just don't don't know about that maybe lets me do this, but being able to double tap the side of my headset and immediately, you know, see what's going on in my surroundings. So if I need to change something on my desktop or, you know, my dog's laying on my feet and I need to, you know, move her out of the way. This is just a, such a nice feature and it's just it just a nice overall added addition. And I, I felt like this headset had a nice suite of options to be able to change some things around to really give you the comfort level, everything from adjusting the vibration of the controllers to, um, you know, again, this pass through overall, I think the software on this headset actually was pretty good and it impressed me. Now, moving on to a couple of the cons and I do have to talk about these things because it is important to understand that, you know, this is going to be, you know, a couple things that I th hope Pico can improve upon. First and foremost, um, the controllers in some games are off. And, you know, I know that there's some third party softwares that you can kind of do to, you know, fix that. But like, for example, I played some Gun Raiders on the Pico natively and the controller angle compared to the way the gun was, was very unnatural. Um, I've also had issues like whenever I played Population 1 on the PC side of things where the controllers get really, really, really shaky. And Yes, I know you could say, oh, well, do you just have shaky hands? Well, no, because I play on other headsets and everything is totally fine. So I think the motion dampening in the controllers and the tracking maybe needs adjusted or at least give me the setting option to change that so that I'm not having that problem. Because when the when they work, they work really good. But I, I did notice that there was, there was three or four games that I had some trouble with where the controller angle just felt slightly unnatural. And that to me could be a problem and somewhat immersion breaking. Um... One of the things that I, I put in my con category only because it just 
for me, this is my experience, was the comfort level of this headset. Once I got it on and fitting nice and snug, and if you guys watched my tips and tricks video or my initial review of this headset, you'll know that I had some trouble getting this headset to fit tightly to my head. Um, I, I had to do a special trick where I basically lifted the head strap over, tightened it down, and then kind of slid it over my head, which of course, you know, with the, the back plate and all that, you know, rubbing up against your hair is never really a great feeling. Once it was on though, it was great, but getting it on certainly was a little bit uncomfortable. So there's kind of the con, but it's not a total con. It's not going to like change my opinion of the headset or anything. It's just kind of something I just got to do to get, you know, to get into VR, right? That's kind of the, you know, the price you pay. But I felt like the comfort could have definitely been improved upon a little bit. And that also goes for the controllers. I felt like the controllers in general um, are just a little bit clunkier and bigger than some of the competitors' controllers. And not that they didn't work, but the hand angle I felt like on the controllers made some games a little bit more difficult to, to play. And it's, it's, it's weird to explain, but like when you're aiming down the sight of a rifle and you're holding it with two hands, but your, your hand is like tilted in a certain way that just feels just a little bit unnatural, it can be slightly immersion breaking. And again, it's not anything that's like, wow, I, I don't want this headset or this, I wouldn't recommend this headset. It's just a small, subtle thing that I personally noticed that, you know, maybe is important to you or not. But as far as cons go, that's really it. And I thought the general, my experience with this headset was overall very positive. And I want to talk about my overall verdict. Should you buy a Pico 4? Is this headset for you? Well, that's a great question. And I think the answer is lies somewhere in between. And it's really more so what your preference is here. Um, if you're somebody who's looking for a headset with better visuals and you like to play PC VR games and you're looking for a PC VR headset that's you know relatively affordable i think this is a better option than the quest to be honest um generally the graphics i thought were better on pc and if you're playing games on steam anyways then it doesn't matter so you're going to enjoy this headset unless of course you're playing population one which in that case um maybe not because the controllers are really really shaky but let's face the facts most of you aren't playing for pc vr and most of you are looking for the standalone experience and what that has to offer I think that for my verdict for this, it's it's definitely a a strong, strong competitor in the standalone space. Um, I can't recommend one headset over another just because I think that they both offer something that the other headset doesn't have. And of course we know who I'm talking about here, but for, so, for sure, um, Pico is an incredible competitor. And if you are looking to go a different route and, you know, try to go against the norm a little bit and, you know, get on to another company that's, you know, producing solid work and solid content, I think you're going to be satisfied with the Pico's experience overall. And, you know, it's, it's a great price and you're really working towards, you know, getting away from the monopoly that is meta. And I think that that's always an important thing. And you're not going to be disappointed whenever you get your Pico 4. I thought the overall experience with the Pico is definitely very positive. And I know a lot of people, including myself, have already said this, but generally I think of this headset a thumbs up and it's a great option if you're looking for something else other than what meta has to offer. Well, guys, that is it for my in-depth in Well, guys, that is it for my in-depth review of the Pico 4. Um, I've definitely put some hours into this headset now, and I can concretely say that um, I do really like the headset, honestly. I'm a, I'm a fan of the lenses are really great, and I primarily play PC VR. So, you know, as far as the graphical capacities go on this, um, certainly be, very thrilled. So hopefully you guys found that helpful, and... Um, that is going to be it for today's video. So drop a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment in the comment section, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.